Talk Podcast, episode 80. Uh, for people who listen to the pod, there is rarely any like technical issues that I personally deal with behind the scenes, but this is take two. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy that it's on 80 and this is like not my first fucking podcast episode, but um, I do have a special guest in the building. I said this before again. Again, this was already said, but I'm going to re-say it for you guys and for your experience. Um, but I have a special guest in the building. She doesn't want to introduce herself, per se, <laughs> but by the time we're done with the pod, hopefully you'll know more about her. Um, Melina, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Pissed off. <laughs> 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 I'm a little annoyed, but hey, hey. It happens. Tech issues happen, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, <laughs> but we can get right into it again. Uh, there was a topic that um, I had randomly picked because I don't be reading them per se. I just kind of think they sound pretty cool. Um, but segue wise, as far as like the last pod, you did ask me a very specific question about my name. Yes. What do we call you for the folks out there? <sighs> for the folks in here, daddy. For the folks out there, <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> So, my family's from the country, and I have three first names, Calvin, Wayne, and Anthony. That's weird for a lot of folks up north. So is salt and pepper, but that's another conversation <laughs> for another time. Um, but, Calvin, uh, the Chef Cal stuff came out of, like, hate. <laughs> so, anytime something negatively ever happens or something I don't like, I usually just lean into it a little bit. Yeah. So, it actually blew up. So, thanks to the particular person who made me mad that day and... Allowed me to create that Chef Cal page. It's kind of lit. It's kind of up over there. But let's get into the fucking topics. This is choppy as fuck, guys. But I'm a little angry. That's yeah. why. We're good. We're chilling. <laughs> but we're back. Okay, sorry. It's passion. It's passion, not anger. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but there is a question we talked about earlier. The pod y'all will never see. Um, <laughs> what is it called when they don't want to be in a relationship with you? But... They want you all to themselves. We had a cool little conversation. I think this one might equal the same. What are your thoughts? Toxic. Okay, that's where it went. Toxic. <laughs> I don't know if it's toxic. I think... How is it not toxic? That's what I want to ask. Like we were talking about... See, I'm going to keep telling y'all how fire the first one was and how fire this is going to be. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> essentially, I think... When I read this kind of like notion or this paragraph, I think of outside sources that have no context in this at all. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, it goes straight to, oh, we just like fucking with each other and we're not title based and we can kind of do our own thing. Or am I being a weird toxic guy that's saying, hey, you can only fuck with me, which I would never do because I'm a person who's like, hey, do what you want. I want to, I, I feel, per <laughs> I personally just feel like, I'm dope enough for you not to want to do extra. 100, like, absolutely, but <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I can't stop laughing at you. <laughs> okay. It's passion, not anger. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> as far as the, okay, so to your question, right? Mm -hmm. If we are not together, you cannot tell me that I can only engage with you. And that's what the question, or that's what the, the question is pretty much saying. Like, we're not together, but you're only for me. And again, we talk about the gray area. Oh, I, I, I said how fun it was. No, the, <laughs> you're so toxic. <laughs> you are toxic. If you like the gray area, you are toxic, those that are watching. The gray area is not fun. It can be. <laughs> Depends on what position you're in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the gray area, for the most part, is like, what is going on? That's what the gray area means. And I, I don't like questionable stuff so like mm. i'm not trying to play in the gray area i mean <laughs> it but it could be a little lit because like in the <laughs> in the sense of like not knowing what y'all are and well actually this this topic is toxic it's toxic as fuck exactly. if you if you're demanding someone can't do something that's exactly. always toxic now, to your point about the <laughs> communication. Communication is important. Yes, And absolutely. communication can clear up a lot of stuff. So, like, for instance, me and you, like, if we are not together, mm -hmm. you can't say, hey, Milena, you can only be with me, sleep with me, text me, hang out with me, because we are not together. If you say, hey, do you want to be my girlfriend? 
then it's like, okay, cool. You can ask for those things exclusive, like, no. <laughs> like tokens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with that 100%, like, okay. about, like, not communicating, which okay. a lot of people don't do. I say this time and time again. Communication is a skill. It's not something you're born with. It's not something that just happens overnight. Like you have to consistently uh, learn, right? And that's what I when I say uh, things on the podcast. I'm like, hey, I didn't get to this point because me off camera and me on camera are two different fucking people. I fucking jump into character quick. Yeah. Like it's crazy, but you do, <laughs> you do for sure. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely a gray area. Depends on what color gray you're in. Because if you're in that bright ass light gray when you really don't know shit, that's tough. See, and communication styles are different too. Like, it's about how you give it, but also how you receive it. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can't communicate the same way to everybody. Exactly. Like, yeah. I always use the example of like, I have a friend that I talk to a little softer. And then I have a friend who I'm like, you know, bitch. Like, mm -hmm. we just, that's how we talk to each other. So it's just like, you can't. Communication styles. That's what it is. Yeah. And knowing the person you're talking to or engaging with. Yeah, for sure. And is that what you were meeting earlier when you were like, I guess you kind of brought up a topic that you wanted to talk about, about friendship and like healing from distancing yourself from friends? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, same thing with friendships. Like, yeah, there's a healing process with friendships that I feel is really like understudied. People don't talk about how the heartbreak in friendships. And I know you said that you haven't dealt with that yet. I don't think I would unless, God forbid, they passed away or something like that. But essentially, like, my thoughts with that is, like, because I, I, I have associates. I have a lot of associates. I conversate with a lot of people. Like, my DM's a fucking mess. Like, I'm so luckily happy that you talk to me in the podcast one and not my personal one because that shit's a mess. Mm -hmm. And there's many, many unread messages in there and I feel bad, but it is what it is. But um, when I say a friend or a friend to me would mean someone that we met, not we met, um, a friend would be someone that like we met under circumstances that would allow us to be friends to this point. Okay. Because a lot of times people will get a friend, right, when they're younger, teenage elementary school and y'all got together as friends off the strength of having two class periods together. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I ha would have a detachment from a friend or feel any kind of way if we weren't friends anymore because it really just depends on how the fuck did we become friends in the first place. If that makes sense and it may yeah. not. I don't no, know. it makes perfect sense. <laughs> like there was a certain situation is what you're saying that like encourage the friendship yeah like if, it, if we bonded off of cheetos and and i say cheetos because i don't like cheetos but if we bonded off of cheetos in elementary school and somehow we're 20 years later down the road and we're still friends kind of and we stopped liking each other stopped wanting to talk to each other i i don't see me for me personally there would be any kind of detachment or healing needed i'll just go buy some cheetos so even oh my goodness just go buy some cheetos <laughs> <laughs> like i I guess it's hard to explain. And also, too, I'm going to say that I think it's different for men and women. No, everything's different. Not everything. A lot of things. Like 99.9% .9 of things. <laughs> I'll give you like 90, <laughs> maybe 85% is different. But in this situation, yeah, because women are like emotional creatures. So like, yeah, there's definitely like a detachment process. Like I, like I told you, I recently went through that and it was heartbreaking. And so I'm just not friends no more. We just grew apart. And there's no beef. We just grew apart. And I kind of had to, like, grieve it in a sense. Like, I had to grieve it because we've been friends over 10 years. So it's just, like, a time thing. Like, spending all of high school together when I come home from college. Like, I would go see her. So, like, it's just a healing process. Like, a healing process is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> would y'all talk, like, every day? Pretty much. If not every other day or, like, you know, even little stuff. You know how, like, you send your friend something funny on Twitter or something mm -hmm. or Instagram? Those type of conversations. But when, like, something tragic happened my right hand person or like I was her right hand person so mm. I feel like people don't talk about the process of grief I can agree with that 1000% yeah. uh, like when I say my two friends my two friends right they haven't lived in the same city as me for like a decade now yeah and they're both married yeah. with like kids that's how I feel too <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then yeah so I I don't I don't know if we could ever be 
like detached, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not an expert on friendships. But I do agree with the whole like bonding thing. Like I think friends bonding over certain things matter. Like mm-hmm. yeah. So like me and my best friend, we bonded because we uh we both were in band and we played the trombone. So we were like yeah. I always wanted to be in band. <laughs> it's awesome. It sounded like, cuz um back in the day, I don't know if this is true now, like I went to Fulgerville Middle School. Me too. And I went to Parkrest. I went to both. Oh, no, not Parkrest. No, we, we, don't don't mess, we, don't <laughs> <laughs> we don't mess with Parkrest. We don't mess with Parkrest. I went to Fulgerville Middle School, and at the time, they had a um, a guitar class. Like a, what do you call it? An elective? Is that what it's called? Elective, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they had a guitar class. But I really wanted to be in band. You should have. But the stereotypes and peer pressure and, Yeah. In middle school? Middle school, yeah. high school, school, yeah, all school. Sure. I was in band, like, I think out of the three years, two years, me and my best friend, like, we stuck it out together. In high school? Middle school. Middle school? I was too cool in high school. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you on that one. I was way too cool in high school. And you played soccer? Basketball. Played basketball in high school and then soccer, out, like clubs? Out, yeah, like outside of school, I would play soccer. And you then, were but a goalie. I played soccer like when I was young. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll show you the baby picture. That was the real deal, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Paisel, I think it was. Is that what it is? Pace. Paisel, something like that, yeah. It was out there by the um, Spring Hill Fields. Mm. You know that's that member? Kind of by PMS. Yeah, there's those fields on like by Windermere. Yeah. No, not Windermere. No, 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 uh, not Windermere. That elementary school that's like right there on that corner. Spring Hill. Yep. Yeah. That's where I went to. Oh wow, that's crazy. I know. So yeah, they like building apartments over there now. So that's crazy. Yeah. Because we were maybe at, like you were maybe at Spring Hill while I was at like <laughs> middle school. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's wild. I know. <laughs> trying to call me young or something yeah (laughs) yeah how does it feel how does it feel to be old (laughs) it hurts (laughs) just a little bit that's hilarious (laughs) that's funny um but to even take it back in that day like uh there's another conversation we can go over about meeting parents and families and stuff like that like i only i personally have only had one like scenario where the dad tried to be like two dad Mm, like, that's ugly. That doesn't work for me. Yeah, that's kind of. I don't care enough. Yeah. I just met your daughter, sir. <laughs> you think I'm gonna let you talk to me? However, so you want. why are you meeting the parent when you just met the daughter? It was like that was like teenage young oh, years. I see. Like okay. you have to like kind of go through the yeah. parents. You kind of like broker the deal through the parents back then. I am absolutely <laughs> not giving any guy the privilege to meet my dad. I don't care if I'm a teenager. Like, for me, it was like, no. Unless we're, like, boyfriend and girlfriend, which in high school I really didn't have, it's like, there's no way. I think it's different for, like, well, I don't know, because if you, I don't know. I don't know how that makes sense, what I was about to say, but, like, usually dads would want to meet the guy you're dealing with. Dealing with, okay. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I have a pretty good record with dads. I'm, like, I'm probably... I don't have an exact number, but uh, let's just say I'm, I have a winning record with dads. Hence the, is it the, the daddy uh, No, this hat? has nothing to do with that. So can you explain the difference? Yeah, absolutely. So the daddy hat is like male birth control, right? Like <laughs> I don't want to be a daddy right now. So if I constantly remind myself that I exist out there and put the hat on, <laughs> as long as I have this on and I avoid baby owls at stores, I'm good to go. No, in fact, that's how it works. <laughs> I just, yeah, I can't imagine being a mom right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of, it's, it's, as the kids say, I'm young and turnt. That's what the kids you say. You are young. I'm young and turnt. You got to say it together. I've never heard that combo. Well, you're old. So. Wait. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Episode over. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I, I, don't, I can't recall a time where like I met a parent or a partner's parent and they were like, "No, nah, he's not the one." I'm usually the one. Like I'm the one that you want to keep. Like interesting. Based off of all the weirdos that you may or may not bring home. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I haven't had many encounters with parents. Like the one I have had, I'm still cool with them. Like regardless of me and like their son being together, me and them are great. I love my ex's mom and dad. See, my mom thinks she can do that. <laughs> 
Like, she thinks she's okay to talk to my exes. No, don't talk to my exes. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> you sever ties. When you break up, you sever ties with the family. Is Unless you're married for 10 years. <laughs> for 10 years? <laughs> yeah. So nine doesn't make yeah, it. Nine, nope. <laughs> 10. 10. Okay. I don't know how I feel it's about it. It's part of paperwork. Once part you file the divorce, if it's not that 10 mark, cut off. What about kids? Cut them off too, yo. I cannot stand <laughs> you. <laughs> I Negotiating the paperwork, who takes the kids? Yeah. See you, little dude. See you, little dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Horrible. That's actually a... The, there is something that's happening with the NBA player, uh, Andrew Wiggins. Mm-hmm. And this is not the truth. I, I don't think this is true. But um, allegedly, his girlfriend or wife or whoever, their kid isn't his. It's his friends who lives oh, with them's kid. Jesus. What would you? Well, you couldn't because if you were the if you had the kid, you would be like, "It's my kid." But what are your thoughts on that? Like, I personally, if I found out and I was in this relationship with this person that the kid I'd been raising for five or whatever X amount of years, I was going to say, how old is a kid? I think it's like five or six. Or something Either way, like that. it's wrong. But I just, I'm curious. Oh, the kid got get out. We're not even. We're not related anymore. See, also too, <laughs> me and you are a little different. We don't have kids yet. Yes. Okay, so I feel like you're talking from a standpoint of like not having kids yet as I'm going to too but it's just like you have like a bond with this person like it's a child and the child like I couldn't just leave the kid I'm gonna go get my own kid <laughs> like my real kid <laughs> I'm gonna go get my real kid you talk as if you're just gonna go get it from Walmart like, <laughs> like you never know who you bump into at Walmart <laughs> It's an unfortunate situation, and again, it's heartbreaking, and there was yeah. going to have to be grief to be dealt with. Like, That's heartbreaking, and the kid's five, five years is a long time to think a kid is yours. And then even like if we dive deeper into that, it's not even really into like the kid, yes, but also like the friendship of his friend and then his person, like betrayal everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But I also say this about like women who already have kids, and the, and the, I would if I come into the relationship and we don't work, not doing it. Yeah, that is tough. I've actually I've never been in a relationship with a woman with a kid. Would so you would though? No, I feel like I feel like honestly, <laughs> <laughs> you're saying I, a no, like a hard no. Yeah, I feel like honestly, I would probably be more comfortable. If you had a kid and that kid was like your sister's that wasn't doing too well in life and you took over the responsibilities versus it being your own personal kid. So no biological children. Yeah. Okay. So I don't feel shallow then either because I, okay, no, I'm just making sure we're the both the same kind of shallow because <laughs> I, yeah, it, but then too, it's hard because I feel like we're in this age where like everyone has. No, it's not the truth. It is. The, everyone not, has a kid. I don't have a kid. Yes. I know mad people who don't have kids. No, bro. Everyone has kids. No, I, I literally know mad people who don't and have I kids. I know mad people who do have kids. You work at a school. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, like my students have kids. You have mad kids. My students have kids. Like I'm telling you, everyone has kids. Yeah, no, 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 no. And if we talk about like the dating game, like if I was to meet someone at my job, they all have kids. And I spend 40 plus 50 hours <laughs> a week at that job. So like I feel like, yeah. No, I, I I I've I've never had an issue finding a woman with no kids. Really? It's not hard for me because like the only time it's hard is when you don't specify if that's your kid <laughs> or it's is that your niece or nephew. I need clarification. Okay. So if you have tons of pictures with kids, I need to know whose kid that is. Okay. So tag the parents, <laughs> and then if that's you. Write it on your bio. <laughs> Write it. So if I, <laughs> I'm not putting that I have a kid in my bio. It's only fair. You put everything else. Okay. Your OnlyFans tag. Touche. Your, Touche. <laughs> what you did on Wednesday. Okay. What you ate yesterday. What you're gonna cook on Thursday. Why would you not put that? Okay, that's fair. I would want to know ahead, but again, sometimes aunts. There's some just proactive aunts out there. Yeah, that's true. Like. My best friend, she, one of my best friends, she has a, she has two sons. And so, like, yeah, I'm in auntie mode sometimes. Like, I, I love those two little boys, so. I'm actually an uncle, but I haven't met my, my nephew yet. He lives in California. Okay. 
So, but I'm not like a, I don't like video chatting and I know that sounds weird coming from me, but like, I don't like video chatting with like people I, I know in real life, like yeah. before knowing them, like, I mean, after yeah. knowing them, okay. like we're never going to video chat ever again. Yeah. Cause if I ever want to talk to you, I would just like call you or text you or, or exactly. reach out to you. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not against women who have kids. I'm just against dating them. <laughs> exactly. Like it doesn't seem fun over there. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it do, it I was laughing about a post. Um, it was like, <laughs> it's really dark though. It was a post on Instagram and it was like, I like something about not dating them unless the baby father is d- not alive. <laughs> like I do not want to deal. I hope this is on. I do not want to deal with men, with baby mothers. <laughs> like, is, is it the, the, is it the, the, it's the baby mother that you don't want to deal with, not necessarily the kid. I don't want to deal with what comes. I'm not for for one. I can openly say I'm not ready for kids, so I don't want to deal with any kids, and it ha- has nothing to do with the guy per se. He could be great. I just don't want to deal with kids right now. So and you don't want to go to the the sport event for the kid, and you have stepmom on your t-shirt, and you know, <laughs> you know she has mom, and then he has dad, and then you know whoever she's dating has stepdad on their t-shirt. That is so awkward. Like you're showing up for the kid. I don't want that kid. I don't want that kid. I am in like full. Like <laughs> let me be very transparent. Right now, I am in full. Like, and I don't want to say hot girl because that's not. I don't like that term so much. I'm in full like young and lit right now. <laughs> I don't want kids. I don't. Yeah, it just doesn't like. So <laughs> it's actually funny. Like. Uh, we did a Halloween episode where I dressed up as a Blockbuster employee, and uh, <laughs> one of the, uh, I don't know if it was a question, but like, one of the people on the podcast was like, Calvin, you're 30, why don't you want kids? And I'm like, I don't know if, if that's a factor for me, because I think a lot of times, like, a child is a legacy for people. Mm-hmm. Like, it's something that they can contribute to things when they're gone. Mm-hmm. I got mad lit shit that's just going to be out there. Yeah. Like moving forward, there's just mad shit outside. Yeah. And I don't have that void. Yeah. I I like <laughs> that. I like that theory. Like I like I see what you're saying and it makes sense. Like I think for me, I do want kids eventually. But I think it has to do with like the dating game right now. And that scares me. So having an attachment with someone that I'm not or I don't see I don't see a future with anyone right now. So it would be hard for me to imagine kids. That's really what I think it is. So you say the dating realm. So you're just saying they're just mad parents outside. Yeah. Where would you outside of work, where would you meet somebody? Where could I meet the gym and I don't want to meet anyone at the gym. Why not? I just don't feel like, <laughs> and for and honestly, when I go to the gym, I'm not looking to meet anybody. I'm looking for when I'm looking busted. I'm going right after work. I see. Know. We're gonna kind of stop that though about the looking busted thing. Sometimes y'all look better busted. Sometimes, like that's a fact. Like better busted. Yeah, and busted is a, is subjective to you, right? Like, yeah. You think you look busted. Yeah. But dude lifting the, the 20 dumbbells is like, oh, she's fire. Yeah, exactly. Like my dad, too. My dad's like, even for the podcast, I was like, dad, should I do my makeup? And he's like, you look beautiful without it. And then he sends me all these baby pictures. He's like, look at you. <laughs> and I'm just like, thanks, dad. <laughs> so I don't know. I, just, I mean, I feel busted. So I'm not really in the headspace to meet somebody. Because how you look is how you feel. And, and that's exactly why um, these days a lot of dudes would rather women approach them. You know, it makes it easier for men to feel comfortable in those scenarios because, like, dude can legit think you look amazing and you're at the gym and he approaches you and you're thinking of it as weird, icky, weird dude brain (laughs) is trying to touch me in the gym. But it's not that. He legit is interested in you and this just happens to be where you guys meet. Okay. So, like... Do you want women to Absolutely. approach you? Absolutely. No, give the other answer. <laughs> give the other answer, Calvin. What do you mean? Do you do you care if women? Do you want women oh, to approach you? Oh, okay, yeah, you? yeah. No, no ugly women. <laughs> That's so. It's not like I. I think people are so blind to like what life really fucking is. Like, 
look at you and then look at me and then vice versa. Like people know where they can hit and where they can't hit. Like people know their sweet spots. I, I, I'll use a sports analogy. Shaq's not shooting threes. No facts. He's yeah. getting in the paint and then getting a the bucket that way. Ugly people got to get buckets in the paint. The pretty people can shoot threes. It's that simple. But again, that's <laughs> like your ugly is not somebody else's ugly. I might be his cup of tea, but I might not be yours or I might not be his cup of tea. Like everyone's ugly to somebody. I think like there's many beverages out there. <laughs> You know exactly if it's a tea that has milk in it, if it's a tea that has honey in it, it's tea. If it's a soda, it's a soda. If it's water, no matter if it's Dasani or purified from Walmart, it's still fucking water. People know what categories that is. And I think people don't, uh, I don't don't know how to explain it. I just don't think people are realistic with themselves. So you're saying to shoot in your range? I'm saying shoot where you make buckets. Okay. If you do make buckets. (laughs) <laughs> and, and it's also a confidence thing. If you're ugly and confident, cool. And when I mean when I say ugly, I don't mean like I don't just mean like looks. I mean overall everything. Okay. Like your overall like being is being ugly or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Because I'm like because <laughs> like like I said and like you just said like looks are subjective. So you know it really just depends. Approach is everything. But I in the way the 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 scheme of things are happening now in this world, like, and it, it, I don't know if it sounds like off putting to women that men want them to come at them, but like, it only makes the most sense in the world for women to come at dudes in this kind of climate. Cause yeah. if I'm, if I'm, if I hit on you at the gym, again, your response may not be your response at Walmart or HEB. Mm-hmm. So is there a specific time and place that a dude should be allowed or, you would want them to hit on you outside of work because honestly that should be the one place that it should be the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like we should be able to hit on you or not hit on you, but approach you outside of work Mm -hmm. versus being at work where you're probably not supposed to do that. Yeah. Is there a place? Is there a place? I mean like social, (laughs) like social places, like for example, like if like the domain of course, or like if you're downtown, if you're into going down there, like I just, I'm an advocate for women Anybody, not even women, anyone doing what they feel like doing respectfully. So, like, if I see somebody that I like, I will approach them. My friends will tell you I will approach somebody. (laughs) And I will just, even if I just laugh a little bit, like, (laughs) I'll approach you. And, like, if someone approaches me, even if I'm not interested, I will be really nice. And I'll just turn it down nicely. So there's not a right place. How do you turn turn, turn them down? (laughs) Just like, oh, thank you. I just say thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then, like, usually I'll look over, like, oh, my friends need me. <laughs> Something nice and subtle. I don't like the whole, I don't like this era of mean girls. Mean for no reason, girls. Like, thinking that it's cute to be mean. That is, that's ugly. That's very ugly. So I'm just, I try to be a sweetheart. Has that worked for you? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Me being nice? Yeah. Yeah, honestly, me being this nice has got me a lot of places thus far. Like, and I was just raised like that. Yeah. My dad, my dad, yeah, my dad's a great guy. He, I talk about him a lot already with you, <laughs> but like, yeah, he, he just kind of raised me to be me, like always. And so that's who I am, just a nice person. So has it worked for me? Maybe <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> What's the worst date you've been on ever? Truth be told, Calvin, <laughs> I have not really been on a date before. And I and I know that sounds weird, but like I really haven't been on a what is a date? Uh someone who's me and I did answer this in uh what was it? Fuck, what was it? Maybe it was two episodes ago, I don't know. But uh, maybe it was the first one in here with Kay, who was a previous co host of mine. Shout out to Kay. Um when someone has mutual won't when oh, I'll be serious. Oh, I can't talk. Uh, when two people have mutual interest in each other and meet up at a particular location. Okay, so with that definition, I've definitely hung out <laughs> with people. Um, I always tell my friends about the story. I mean, I went and hung out with a guy at the domain. Oh, and it wasn't a bad date. 
like, no, it was actually like the other side of the domain, the like yard house, you know that area, yard house. What That's is my on? favorite restaurant. Yeah, mine too. It's lit. I love yard house. They have happy hour twice in a day. Oh, it's lit. Reverse happy hour. I just, and you can continue with what your definition of a date is, but like the yard house is one of my favorite restaurants. I worked for Olive Garden for a very, 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 very long time. Really? And they're a Darden restaurant. So like yard house, Cheddar's, Olive Garden, Red Lobster, uh, Eddie V's, all in the same branch. So I got my little 35% discount at all of those restaurants and I was outside. As you should be. Yeah, it was lit. Yeah. I'd be outside, too. I love all those places. But Yard House is really good. I love Yard House. Shout out to Yard House. For sure. Yeah. I almost worked there. Yeah. <laughs> I almost worked there. It's a good vibe. like, And I also feel like Yard House is a good like first date. We went to Valencia's. Never heard of it. It's actually... <laughs> it's by Culinary Dropout. You know what that's at? Yes. Okay. It's like all in that realm. Valencia's mm. is a Mexican restaurant. Okay. It's amazing. It's lit. I don't, well, continue with what, you know, dating is for you. It was just an awkward date, let me say that, because I had to start all the conversations. And I think that we both kind of agreed that we weren't really interested in each other. I think you talk too little, you think I talk too much. So <laughs> we just kind of like just shook <laughs> and went on about our business. <laughs> and this was a while ago. This was a while ago, a while ago. So I told you, Calvin, I'm horrible at conversations sometimes, but I was trying. I, um... I have a rule. Um, <laughs> first scared. dates, first dates are never at a restaurant. Why? There's too much going on. Okay. There's there's noise. There's coordination of waiting, or maybe if there is a wait, if it's on the weekend, like there's too much unplanned time for a first date for me to take someone out to eat, and half of the date you're eating, so you're not talking. So it, although they can be cool, it's it's a no for me. I'd rather do something as simple as like, hey. Let's just, like, what are you into? Do you like sweets? Do you like coffee? Do you like drinks? Like, what do you want to do? Like, we can go do that. And it has to be on a weekday, too. I'm not doing the weekend vibe date thing. That's weird to me. Mm. At this point in my life, I don't got time for it. I'm old, you know? <laughs> you are hilarious. <laughs> Something simple. Something simple. Something to where we can literally sit down and we can talk. And then also... When it comes to dating, I also want to have some kind of real dialogue with you, not just, hey, let's go out. This is my first time reaching out to you or your first time reaching out to me. And it's like, hey, let's go date. No, let's let's have some dialogue. Let's be able to call back something from a conversation, whether it was something that was super small or whether it's just something that you thought was funny at the time and you can bring it up now. Now it's funny in real life. So it's funny twice. Like there's just what is so appropriate much. dialogue for a first date? I'm curious. Anything. <laughs> No. I mean, well, I mean, anything, really. Like For a first date, like, I'm not going to disclose certain stuff the first date as I would the eighth date. I think that's just a comfortable, uh, a comfortability thing with yeah. people. Like, for me personally, I have no problem telling you. I have stories for days. Like, I don't have a problem telling you about a story that happened, whatever, an embarrassing moment, or I don't lead with my fake self you get that later like yeah. you get the, <laughs> you get that later i don't get, know if that's just a better. little bit later you get the fake stuff a little bit later i don't know if that's once better. i start to get more in in depth if that i don't know if i'm saying that right or not but like i lead with me like i don't have a problem with just telling you who the fuck i am yeah like i don't have anything to hide or anything like that but first dates are because I can, you can tell on a, on a first date, like if this is gonna work or not. Yeah, it's I agree simple. with that for sure. Honestly, you can tell in a few hours. Like, <laughs> yeah, like seriously, and like just like at that date I told you in at Valencia, I knew right away. I'm like, oh fuck, like I'm just <laughs> having to think of shit in my head to keep the conversation going because now we're stuck eating, <laughs> and I have to wait for the slow ass waitress. You know what I mean? So like trying to kill time so we can go ahead and. Yeah, so yeah, I, I personally, like, I don't know if this has ever happened on the opposite, like, of the, the woman I'm dealing with felt this way. I've never felt uncomfortable in a setting with someone for the first time, because I feel like I do, like, the work ahead of time. Like, I, I try to make things super comfortable, because, for one, your best self is in comfortability, and for two, conversation only thrives in comfortability. Like, if yeah. you are uncomfortable, you're not going to tell me about your, your grandma's height or you're not going to tell me about and that's just a random thing because I have tall family members so that conversation happens. You have really tall family members. Yeah that's what I'm saying like 
uh, like I'm just like in my immediate family, I'm the shortest one. Yeah. Outside of my parents getting older, so they're like hunching a little bit. But um, <laughs> yeah, my brother's like six five or six six or whatever. And my parents, prior to being a little older, they're in their sixties. We're like six two, six three. So, um, and then I have uncles. I have an uncle that's like seven plus. I have two cousins that are six seven. Like I'm the short dude, yeah. and I'm older than them. That pisses me off. <laughs> that's a story for another time. Um, but. Yeah, I, I just I per, I go out of my way to make sure people are comfortable because again I love conversation. I can literally just talk. Yeah, but That's I'm shy I'm as hell. Too. See, me too. I'm like really <laughs> shy sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no fuck ups, guys. And we're 37 minutes in. Yay! <laughs> Everything gonna crash. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, in regards to you and dating, so you said you're saying you haven't really gone on a date per se. How did that even happen? How did you get from conversation to the restaurant? Like, how how did that happen? We, so that's what I'm saying. I think my (laughs) definition of date is it right? Or is it maybe because I know there might be different definitions. So, like, we met out and then we exchanged numbers and then I he kind of initiated us going out. So I was like, okay. So we we go out and like it was just different, I guess. I don't know if it was like I'm not really a drinker. Were y'all all. were y'all talking in between like before like before the day or was it like here's my number? We met like on a Saturday and I remember we went on like a Wednesday. Okay. It was like like that type of thing. So yeah, we were talking in between, but it was during basketball season. I was real busy. Um I started teaching, so and then I'm also in grad school, so a lot of homework and stuff. So I don't I'm not the. I'm not gonna say I'm not oh, the you best. You leaving texture. him on red? No, I don't do that. To people. <laughs> oh, you leaving him on red? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't really like doing that. I really don't. I really don't like doing that. But I will. But I don't like doing it. There and was like, um. <laughs> you were leaving that dude on red. That's all he was like. Well, go on this dinner, and I'm not gonna talk. Again. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk to you. Dude. Yeah, it was really awkward. I'm glad we. Yeah, <laughs> probably I've, better as friends. I've never had an awkwardness because God, I can't think of. I can't think of a time where I went on like any kind of like dinner date or anything like that. Where but you have a knack for this stuff. That's so not like the truth. Yeah, it is the truth. Communication, the skill. <laughs> My major in grad school is communication. And I'm learning the ins and outs of it, and you're great at it. I think school teaches you how to speak to white people. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I can agree with that. But honestly, I didn't need school to figure out how to talk to white people. I have white family members. Like You're mixed? You're mixed. That's a a good question. So, like, my dad, (laughs) my dad's mom is from France. Like, she's a short white lady with red hair. Like, she's French. Like, she's French. First language is French and everything. So, like, she's a white woman. And I, I speak to her like we speak great. <laughs> oh, it's lit. Yeah. And my mom, my mom's from Ethiopia. Even litter? Yeah. Have you had the food? I've never had Ethiopian food. It's the best thing in the world. Where would you go here? Um, The place, I think, is actually called Ethiopian Restaurant. And it's off 290. You probably have seen it before. Oh, what's the name? I just haven't maybe got to that culture yet like i'm i'm outside with the food but maybe that's just one I've, i haven't got to at the moment i haven't tried any african food at all like really? anything i um that's besides that that's it like i really want to try uh fufu i've had that <laughs> so you try so is it good i can't say oh jeez, it looks good <laughs> like I, honestly there's not a lot of food i don't like so. you know what's funny that we're talking like Analytics are super cool. Um, I know what countries are listening. And there's like five African countries yeah. that are like three, four percent. That's not a lot, but it's enough to know that people are listening to you that have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. So anytime <laughs> I say anything about Africa, I just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually funny. <laughs> that is actually funny. <laughs> What was I gonna say? What were you gonna say? I don't remember. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, What's the, another topic on there? No, there was there was something else that like 
I wish I had that phone and not this one. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. Th- oh, God. There was, you said something, and I just can't think of it. What was it? What was it? You said something that sparked something. That I said I studied communication in grad school? No, it was the French thing. The white woman. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, don't t- we don't do that here. Um, fuck. Oh, got it. Did you take Spanish or another language in high school? So at Pflugerville, it was required to take two years. So I had to, mm-hmm. I took two years of Spanish. Okay. Why didn't you do any other? You know I'm going to give you that basic answer. <laughs> because we live in Texas, and, like, everyone <laughs> speaks Spanish. And I felt like at the time, and then also I was getting drilled into my head, like, if you're bilingual or you'll get paid more. more money. They still spilling that shit? They still do that. <laughs> and it's not true. It's really not true. I took German. Oh, what's a word I know? Oh, what's a, guten Tag. What does that mean? Hello? Mm-hmm. Okay. My guy still works there at, at, at Flugerville, uh, Mr. Riker. Riker. He was a German teacher. I don't know if he teaches anything else. Shout out to him. I really want to get him on the pod eventually. Like, He's dope. He listens. But he was the, he's, he's, I actually don't know if he's still there. That's actually crazy. Who was your principal? I don't fucking know. Mr. Wrinkle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember, did you play sports? Yes. Do play you soccer. Know Ragosa? Coach Ragosa? The football coach. The basketball coach. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. He might have coached football too, because you know they all coached yeah. like a whole bunch of Ragosa. High shout school's out. such a blur. Yeah, shout out to Ragosa. I think I, I, I that name like it it resonates, but yeah. I, yeah, I don't remember. It's been so long. Great coach. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah. We know. <laughs> Technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, this is exact. I actually lied to you. Like that was not what came up in my mind. That was just one of the things. Did you know I'm ADHD? You know, it's all over the place. But um, it was in regards to uh, leaving people in red. Yeah. I think there was a not a meme, but someone that uh, I follow on Facebook had said like that double text means everything. And I don't agree with double texting. I think that's weird. Really? Yeah. Why? Why do you not respond to me? <laughs> Things come up. So does the message when you go back into it. You what can even they... see exactly where you left off. You can pause it and come right back. I, so, me personally, I am not a double texter, Same. per se, unless it's, like, something urgent. So, like, for example, if I was, like, trying... I mean, like, yeah, if I was trying to find out where you live to come here mm-hmm. and you didn't respond, I'd be like, hey, Calvin, you good? <laughs> <laughs> that's the type We're of double potting? text. Yeah, like, that's the type of double text I'm okay with. But, like, I agree with you in regards to the other dynamics. Like, I'm not going to sit there and. Yeah. You either want to talk to me or you don't. It's really I'm not a simple. forcer. Yeah. I'm not going to force. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to double text or message you like you saw the message motherfucker like it's okay i no one's busy no one's that busy in life to where they can't just go back to it yeah because you went back to the same app to post the 17 memes in the last 22 minutes (laughs) that is true (laughs) that is true that is very true i told you this wasn't me this wouldn't be um awkward it's kind of fun huh yeah it is fun does any of this okay nope huh nothing what i was gonna ask a question ask it I was going to say, does any of this get cut out? No. Fuck no. What? This is all in. There's no way. This is the way. And this is the yes. There's yes, this is the way. Great. <laughs> there is no cutting. There's, so I, that's why I tell people when they come on the pod, I'm like, hey, if you want to stretch, if you want to move around, if you want to get your thoughts together, <laughs> cool. This is your time. Everything outside of that, unless you see. So there's a reason why. That is actually because early on, <coughs> early on on the pod, I told you, I don't know if I told you this, the first episode I ever recorded was me and my friend Courtney, Kathy, shout out to Courtney, in front of a phone, just talking. Literally, we're just at a table, phones right here, and we're just talking. Yeah. And she said mad, like not okay shit. And I felt at that time, I was like, damn. Because cause I guess the height of podcasting was, I would say, 2018, 2019. People don't believe that or know that, but that's that's facts. Majority of podcasts that started in the last few years have ended and don't exist. 
Um, but she said some out of this world shit. And I was like, damn, I'm going to protect her. But on the other end, I was like, I actually had to cut out a bunch of shit. And it ended up being seven minutes long. Yeah. And <clears throat> my thought is now, like, don't say it if you don't want me to post it. Yeah. Like, there, there is no in between. Mm-hmm. Unless someone incriminated themselves, which someone has at like the super highest level, did cut that out. But again, now moving forward, nope, everything stays. Yeah, I like that. Everything. Because the, the conversation doesn't even sound right. And I listen to certain podcasts now and I can, I can, I can hear the cutouts. The cuts. Yeah. And pe- most people really can't if they don't listen to consistent podcasts. Not just one person's podcast. Like I probably on average per day, I'm listening to like six or seven different podcasts. Yeah. Not I including podcasts, my own. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Podcasting is cool. Like, I could listen to them all day. Same. And it's, and, and I know you said that, like, uh, maybe hearing your own voice, like, because of course you hear your, your thoughts in your head, but it, it's going to be different. It's horrible. Like, <laughs> I told you, I don't know if it's like the, the oak or the cedar or what's outside. I woke up and I couldn't, like, I can't get myself together. Yikes. So, like, yeah, my. <laughs> Yeah, my throat and my <laughs> I just I hate hearing myself talk. I feel like a lot of people don't like to hear themselves talk. I hated it at first until I realized like I don't actually care. Yeah. Like it's a care I thought I had until I heard it a billion times. Like I don't care. Yeah. Opinions are opinions. Like if someone was to say, Hey, I don't like the way your voice sounds, what do, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to change it? Yeah. Voice surgery? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You let it be quiet. You gotta keep the comp. I'm just playing. I did it on purpose. <laughs> like this is. It. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so I feel like we had some good topics on there. Yeah, we've actually got through what about the majority of them. Um, I feel like knowing you so far, you you have something funny to say about that. <laughs> about what? <laughs> the plies one. Oh, that's exactly what I was looking at. So I don't quote people, so I don't know if he said or didn't say this, but essentially he's basically just saying um, dudes these days don't really just care about the looks aspect of, of women. And I can 100% attest to that. Like, I, You can be the most beautiful woman in the universe, but if we can't conversate, it's not going to be fun. Like, Because not only does beauty kind of leave you at a certain point, you know, you can be a beautiful 40 or 50, 60, whatever, beautiful, beautiful for your age, whatever the case may be. But, like, that's not as important to me in dealing with someone as just pure conversation. Yeah, like, that beautiful woman is also the same person that is going to raise your children when you do have them. So it's just, like, for me, I mean, of course, I feel like it would be a lie to say physical attraction isn't the first thing people notice. No, it is. It is, for sure. 1,000%. But, like, you got to have more. Yeah. Like, you really do. You have to have more. And if you don't have more, I mean, I feel like relationships are give and take. I always say that. You have to be able to, like, give me more than that so I can, I don't know, it's just like a, like a cycle with relationships. No, absolutely, absolutely. Like, you have to be able to, I guess, not really say do something for me, but, like, exist in a space where I feel comfortable coming back to that space exactly, every yeah. day moving forward. Exactly. And a lot of people don't think about that. Mm-mm. Oh, you look good. I look good. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> now you're stuck in a relationship based off of fucking yeah. for like the next four, nine years, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. And that's why I always say, like, I don't I don't just get into relationships. I've maybe been in two. Two, like, one situation and then one relationship. And by situation, I mean we were in the gray area, and Ooh, that situation made me never, gym. yeah, that made me never want to be in the gray area again. So I. Who was the who was the more of the gray? When I, I had said earlier, like the lighter of the side is usually the side that's blinded because you don't really see much. The darker of the side is usually more ingrained into like what's happening. What side were you on? It was so. If we're talking, <laughs> he. I think I wanted the commitment or relationship part of it. He was just like. I, I'm not ready or I don't want it, but please don't be with anybody else. And at the time, I was a little younger, so I was just like, okay. <laughs> like, okay, like, that makes sense. You know, he still is into me. We hang out all the time, so, like, he's just not ready. So I always say, I don't like the whole I'm not ready thing. I don't like the whole I'm not ready thing, but you're still for me. I don't like that because I feel like 
with the right person, you can get ready. With the right person, you would be ready. I disagree. Because, <laughs> I mean, in a sense of, like, <laughs> stages and understanding, right? Like, this version of me and the version of me four, five, six, seven years ago, I actually would have beef with my previous self. Okay. But that doesn't mean that those scenarios and situations in that real time weren't the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. Like, you couldn't tell me at 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Man, lots of numbers. (laughs) (laughs) I did that on purpose. Um, (laughs) That I wanted to be in a relationship then. Like, I I did, but I didn't. But good thing about me is I usually gave that communication pretty early, like, Hey, this is about to be a fun time. Casual. But, but I'm not looking for anything like that. And it's but the power of choice. Nothing, yeah, the power of choice, absolutely. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like the yeah, casual, absolutely. like we're just, we, we both understand. It's when you're like the term mind fucking somebody. Yeah, and, but uh, what I'm trying to essentially get to is like, or get at is you don't learn that early. You don't. Okay. <laughs> like, you can't. You really can't learn that early. Honestly, you like you can you can pretend and act as if as if you know those things early, or truly have been in multiple situations to where you know that early. But the average person doesn't know that early. Like everyone, when you're younger, you think you're going to be in that relationship with that person forever. You start planning for shit that you have no idea is even going to exist. Mm-hmm. Like I. I've been in relationships for two, three years, and I'm like, okay, this is about to be my life forever. And then after it's over, it's like, damn, I'm fucking 25, 26 years old. I still got mad time left to do shit. People can only, um, I guess, understand in the moment. And in that moment, that dude who said that probably thought that was okay to say because that's the level of knowledge he had at that time. That's also what I accepted. So, like, yeah, like, at the time, again, and then to your point, like, it makes sense. Being that young, you probably don't know mm-hmm. yet. But that's also my first like <laughs> time dealing with a guy for real. So it's just like I accepted that, which is why it continues. Yeah. Like the whole what you allow will continue thing. Yeah. And per se, he could, again, he could have thought that was perfectly fine based off of previous relationships. Like maybe that got him through something, right? Yeah. You can only, you can only, uh, what's the word, emulate? emulate? Yeah, emulate. You can only, it's not the right word. I don't know if I want to use that one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can only, you only can do what you know. Yeah. And once you know other or something else, then you can do something else. So fast forward to this grown age. Mm-hmm. I feel like. That's a, that's a fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep shooting. <laughs> uh, well, because I consider myself grown mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah, I'm pretty grown for the most part. Okay. So, like, I feel like we've been in enough people interactions to know when, to know how to handle certain situations is what I'm trying to say. Like, being in the gray area is not fun. It can be. No. (laughs) Like, (laughs) there's no way. Like, I just want to know what's fun about it. Uh, There's certain people, like myself, who kind of thrive in chaos a little bit, right? So, uh, Security, some, uh, okay, let me say it like this. There's so, no security in the gray area. That's, I, I was trying to, I was about to like explain the differences. Some people thrive in security. Some people thrive in chaos. They don't know it's chaos because they thrive in it. So they, they actually are better off in that situation than they, than they personally would be in a relationship setting. Mm-hmm. Like I've done some of my greatest things in the gray area <laughs> of life. Okay. And then... I've been in relationships where it's just extremely draining and I'm not my best self. See, but that's different though. Like right now I'm in the gray area of my life, (laughs) but relationship status, I'm not dealing with gray areas, but in life it's okay to, I hope that makes sense. Like in life, it's okay to be in a gray area right now. I am going to be 25 soon and I'm at a, I like my job. I, I love my job, but I don't think I'll be there forever. So in my head, I'm still pondering like what's next for me. So I'm in this gray area in life, but when it comes to like my, what is it, romance life, romantic, what's the word I'm looking for? My love life. 
I'm not I don't know what queen. the kids are calling it these days. Yeah, I don't know what the kids are calling it either. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm love life. <laughs> I'm not in a gray area. What are you looking for? In my dating life? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say commitment. Like, I'm look, I'm not, well, I'm not actively, like, searching for a commitment, <laughs> but, like, looking for it. But, like, that's my intentions with dating. I'm not going to say, because marriage and commitment to me are different. So I'm looking for commitment if I'm dealing with you. I'm not looking for a good time. I can, I mean, <laughs> I just don't like that idea. Like, I'm a very structured person. I gotta have something like something has to come with this. <laughs> what did Denzel say? I'm from around the way, and I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> have you seen that? No. It's on Instagram. I hate when I reference something that's on I I don't be on Instagram like that. You're not okay. Well, I'll show you the video. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> Is it from a movie or something? He's like in an interview, and he's like, "I'm from around the way, so I'm leaving here with something." And I totally feel that. Like, I'm not going to waste my time with you. What's wasting time, though? Wasting time is like... Because a person could just say you were committed. Like, committed? If, 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 it, if it's as simple as if that's what you need, if that's the, the validation you need to deal with someone, it could be as simple as just saying, okay. It's not that simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not really about validation for me. It's just commitment. Like... I just need to know what's going on. I'm not anti, I'm not against casual situations in general. I'm just saying where I'm at right now. I've been in casual situations before, like I spent four years in college. Like <laughs> <laughs> I've been in casual situations before and that doesn't even have anything to do with sex. I've just been in casual situations where we we're just kicking it. But if you're asking me right now today, it's like, yeah, I do want commitment because I feel like I feel like that's what's next for me. That's what I've, I've always wanted that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you achieve that? Placing myself in the right places. Like the domain or what? No, not the domain. <laughs> the domain I go, honestly, I'm not a go-outer <laughs> person, if that's a word. Like, I don't really go out that much. I Domain is like, you know, I go with my friends for their birthdays or like special events. My friends are great. Like, they achieve a lot of stuff, so we go celebrate as we should. So I'm just there, but like, I don't expect to meet somebody when I'm out there. I don't know where I would meet someone. Maybe like H-E-B, but not the one off Wells Branch. Oh, that one's ghetto. H-E-B off Wells Branch. Y'all are lit over there. <laughs> it is like, I don't know what happened. Like, I look, I leave it here for years and I come back to it and it's not what I, I wanted. Like, it is like... Tech Ridge. Tech Ridge is where it's at. Tech Ridge is lit. Yeah. Tech Ridge is absolutely lit. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Wells Branch H-E-B. That, like, growing up in Fugerville, like, that was the only H-E-B. Like, That's when we went to, my family. It was that and Albertsons. Albertsons, I remember Albertsons. Shout out to Albertsons. <laughs> no, for real, shout out to Albertsons, because they got rid of all, there was one left in Dallas. I knew that. That I remember, yeah, like, it was right by my apartment. When I was going to UNT, what was I about? To, I was about to say something like fire. It was about to be a fire transition, but I started looking at this red blanket and I can't remember. It is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't think enough people. I don't think we shed light on neurodi- neurodivergence. Like I always talk about it. People with ADHD, mm-hmm. we're lit. Yeah, but like it, we're so funny, unintentionally <laughs> funny. Like. You're looking at that red blank, and I'm looking at that right there. <laughs> and, like, my mind is all over. I've been looking at that for the longest. Like, how is that standing? <laughs> what? Is it a flashlight? Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I was trying to figure out what it, like, what Did is that? You, wait, you stayed in the apartment complexes next to Mandalay, you said, a year ago? About a year ago. San Paloma. That's where I used to stay. Did you ever, did, when, when that big freeze happened, I always, I always make it an effort to try to bring this into the pot as well, about people's experiences. Were you? You in that apartment when that happened? Like mm-hmm. the first, yeah. You talking about the recent one we had? No, no, the one before that. The big, uh, yes, the big I was one. there, and honestly, have, I was fine. You had power and everything. Yeah, I had everything. It's crazy because like, I had power too, but I wasn't at home. I was in New York, and nice. I have a camera, 
in my place. I have cameras in this place. People don't ever notice this camera. It's just, it's there. Oh, it, cool. it exists. It's like a security <laughs> camera? Mm -hmm. I want one of these. It's like 30 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazon? Uh, Best Buy. Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And um, like I knew I had power because the Wi-Fi was on the whole time. Like It's connected to Wi-Fi. So um, if, the, if there's Wi-Fi on, then I have power, obviously. But... Um, it's not super noticeable either. That's kind of cool. I don't know how it's not noticeable. Like, it's not. If I was to walk into this <laughs> space, that's one of the first things I would look at. <laughs> I don't think so. Outside of the grease picture, like I definitely would look at this camera. And, and Kay said that to me too. She was the first episode I did when I moved in here. And this same poster with the camera on top of it was also there. And she was like, oh, you're recording me now? I'm like, Kay, you have been on like 12 episodes, bro. All of them are recorded. <laughs> I was just looking at the grease picture. Like, the grease picture is lit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's literally the first thing I think I think of when I see. I guess, yeah. <laughs> once you notice it? Yeah, maybe once you notice it. I'm just like, okay. But yeah, uh, so you were good. Those apartments were good. This last one that happened, my shit was out. I haven't experienced a horrible freeze yet. Like, so far where I've been at, I think the very, very first one we had, I was still living with my dad, so we were fine. And then the second one was San Paloma. I was fine. And this last, like, recent one we had, mm -hmm. I was fine, too. No, my shit was out. Like, no, actually, <laughs> I think, because I think my homegirl said, because, yeah, so I guess the way the grid is set up is, like, it's half of the apartment, because she lived in the apartments as well, or the apartments that you were in, mm -hmm. and she didn't have power. Neither did I, but the front half of the apartment complex had power. Hmm. So, the shit was kind of weird yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, it probably is how it's like. The and I actually, I'm thinking of that because I bought that flashlight because of it. Oh. <laughs> and it's actually fucking, it was like, it could have possibly have been the worst day ever. So, the power is off. I just went to go, I went to my parents' place. They stay in Hutto. This shit was going off and on throughout the day or whatever. Um, but they have a backup generator, so it wasn't crazy. But I don't want to live with my parents. I could never live with my parents again, like, ever. I moved out when I was 20. Like, I could never. <laughs> that shit would be fucking really? terrible. I could definitely live with my, my dad. Uh-uh. The, the way I move? Hell no. How do you move? I, I'm outside. I can't pod in my parents' house. That's weird. You could pod at your parents' house. No, there's literally nowhere I could pod in my parents' house. Yeah. So it's because of the pod, or like no, no. I just would never want to live with my parents ever again. I, I could not. We have so many differences. Like I, oh, okay. I, no, I'm not explaining shit to you, ever. Do you feel like they would ask? Yes. Okay. They nosy. <laughs> I mean, every parent is nosy when it comes to their kid. Like I don't know. I could. I, I mean. Yeah. No. No. Thank you. <laughs> no. no thank thank you. you. Love y'all, but no. Um. But uh. So. There was no electricity, so I actually, in the middle of the day, I would take my shit to their place and just charge everything. All my laptops. I have, like, mad laptops. Laptops. And charge everything, charge my phones, all that shit, and I would come back. So, as the night would progress, I would then go to my car and start charging shit. And I don't know why my car is built like this. I don't know what the issue is, but I have two keys to my car. One somewhere in the apartment, and then... One off course on my keychain. So I went back upstairs to get something and I locked my car door because it was pitch black. Everyone didn't have lights. I'm like, I'm not getting robbed in in the cold. That's just not gonna happen. So I locked my shit, knowing I have another key here. So I locked my car, car is on, go upstairs, come back down, try to use the key, the spare key, and it doesn't work. Lock myself out of my car. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, but it's, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny so, at all. I'm confused. So how did you So I have two keys. I kept the car on. Okay. Locked the car door. Okay. Went upstairs, knowing I have a second key to just unlock the car when I get down because I didn't know how long I was gonna be upstairs. So of course just keeping the car on so things will charge. Mm -hmm. Come back downstairs, the key doesn't work. Yeah. Horrible day. And my phone was in the car. Oh, yeah, that really sucks, yeah. <laughs> I'd be no, breaking a window, I'm going to let you know that. It crossed my mind. <laughs> Only other phone, I have this second phone, but there was no Wi-Fi, so it didn't work, of course. 
So I was about to say, call a um, pop a lock, but your phone's in the car. Yeah. So my, <laughs> my actual phone's in the car, but I have this phone. So what ended up happening is I ended up calling uh, somebody. Actually, actually, this is even a worse story. So I actually ran to that HEB. I was like, I have nothing to do. This phone was barely charging. I know HEB got Wi-Fi, so I actually ran to Walmart. I mean, HEB to use their Wi-Fi to connect <laughs> to someone on Snapchat. And I was like, I only got five minutes on this shit. It's about to die. I need you to come over right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're coming from Georgetown, so it took a while. But, yeah, crazy story. That is actually funny. It's not funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. It's <laughs> actually even worse because I have what's called Lift Pink. And shout out to Lift. Um, Lift Pink is... Lift itself, but it's an additional service they offer to help tow hmm. if your battery ever goes out. It's like a triple A? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's yeah. only nine 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 a month. Yeah, I have triple A. So um, I had that, but they're not very their their site is super secure. So it was almost impossible for me to get into that account because I have free car openings on that shit. Yeah. So I had to spend like ninety bucks to get my car open. Yeah, it would have been hot. That was hot. Yeah. I was cold because it was freezing cold. <laughs> but, but you were mad. Yeah, I was mad. <laughs> Extremely no. mad. Definitely. <laughs> I'd have been mad. Pissed. But, hey, you live and you learn. You take those situations and you kind of kind of just walk with them or move with them. Does that make sense? Does, that, does moving make sense? Yeah. Or walking? I'm, I'm with you. ADHD brains. We got it. <laughs> we got each other. <laughs> I think I have, like, the, the advanced one. I think you have, like, the normal one. I think I have ADHD+. plus. I definitely have ADHD, whatever, whatever fucking... <laughs> whatever version. Yeah, whatever version that is, <laughs> I have it for sure. <laughs> because it is, I cannot pay attention. And it actually, like, it makes me feel accomplished when I, like, graduate college or, like, I do something big like that. So I'm like, okay, I, can, I did it. Because that shit is hard. People talk about how high school mm -hmm. was so easy. High school was a mess for me. High school was hard for me. It's and been I think, so long, I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while for you. <laughs> it's been a while for you. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's been like, what, five, six years? In 20 years, when you have your 10-year re uh, reunion, are you going to go? Yes. <laughs> for sure. We didn't have ours because of COVID. Blue Girl has some? Actually, mm -hmm. there's a page on Facebook, I think. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, there's really a page <laughs> on Facebook for, like, well, you know, if there are people like the class sponsors and all that, if they're still around. Or no, if you rep in class sponsor in your 30s, you got to figure out something else, my guy. <laughs> what was it? Did you guys have at Pflugerville, um at the football games? What is it called? The P family? We had P family. I don't know what that is. Y'all didn't do high school, right? <laughs> I don't remember high school, honestly. Yeah, I know. It's a while ago. It was a while ago. Wow, a while ago. <laughs> But I remember, like, we had, like, a whole – I wasn't a part of – P Crew. It was called P Crew. And, like, it was the, the student section of the football games, and it was filled, like, completely filled. I was moving – let's just say in high school I, I was I was outside. I wasn't really – like, I was at the games, but I wasn't really at the games. You were outside. If that makes sense. At the games when I – so you were just chilling at the games. Like, you weren't looking, paying attention at the games. Yeah, absolutely not. I fucking hate football. Yeah, I do too. I hate football. <laughs> I love basketball, though. Same. Yeah, I love basketball. I hate football. Yeah, I don't I don't really care to watch men just tackle each other for hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's not is my thing. Is that what it is to you? It's just, it's just a bunch of men in tights tackling each other. All day. <laughs> men in tights. <laughs> it's, like, it's not – like, what? <laughs> the football players are not going to like this one. I, I don't know what to tell. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. I am. I mean, have you been to any NBA games? No, but that's on the bucket list for sure. I I really want to go to a um on a side note. I want to go to a Mavs game. I love Mavs games. You've been to one though at the in Dallas? I've actually when um we recorded the pod in Dallas, we went to a Mavs game that same night. Really? So we recorded and then uh lifted cuz we were fucking lit out of our minds, but we lifted to the uh, stadium to watch the game, second half. Yeah. It was a bad game because I, I feel like every game I go see is a blowout, so like the players I want to watch be sitting. Who would you want to watch on the Mavs? Luka. Luka. Uh, I think that game, the last one I went to, which was uh, in December, was uh, Dallas versus Portland, and Dallas was blowing them out, so Dame didn't even play the whole second half of the third, and maybe like some spots of the uh, fourth, so 
And then Luca was out for like the fourth quarter, basically. Luca's a monster. Yeah, I like. <clears throat> I've always liked the Mavs, and even when I lived in Dallas, I always wanted to like go to a game. I just never got around to it. You got to pull up. I think it's one of my favorite stadiums out of the few I've been in. So I've been to Oklahoma City's place, Dallas, San Antonio. Uh, what's I don't know what their stadium's called, but I've uh, been to Utah uh, for a game. I have yet to go to Houston for a game just yet, but that's probably the next stop, and I probably will kind of tailor it around the podcast, probably find a weekend or a week where they'll be playing on a weekday, uh, record the pod, and then pull up to a game. Yeah. But they're fun. Yeah. They're fun. Crowded. It's like, it's – it's. I took someone for the first time on the Dallas one, and – they had anxiety out the roof. Like, there's so many fucking My people. My anxiety is ridiculous. I think I would flip. <laughs> it's like 40,000 people. Yeah, that's uh, that's too many people <laughs> for me. Like, And it's packed to the brim. Like, literally, if you're not, like, in front of each other, y'all will get people in between you, like, yeah, quick. <laughs> that's, too, that's too many people. Like, I'm cool with being in crowds sometimes, <laughs> but, like, too many people is just a scary situation for me. And that's what they were saying. It was like, what if the roof just collapses? We're, we're, we're all done. I'm just like, you just hit a three. Can you just cheer like everybody else? <laughs> that's true. But see, I'm that person, though. Like, I think of stuff like that. Like, especially when I'm in elevators, I'm like, this shit just falls. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Exactly. I'm just like, <sighs> Houston or Dallas? City wise, Dallas, 1000%. Dallas has better food. Um, that is the first time I've heard that. Better food because I'm gonna give Houston the food. I um, I've eaten at over 200 restaurants in the last two years. That's awesome. So, because I'm such a food person, so I just try a lot of food. So anytime I go to a city, I don't care if it's out of state, I don't care if it's Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. My day is centered around food. I'll try a new place for brunch. I mean, uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All three different places, yeah. and be there for four or five days. So that's, that's easily nice. twenty restaurants I try for the first time yeah. in the time frame. So Houston is a bunch of fool's gold, like amazing brunch spots, right? That serve the exact same thing at every single one of them. Outside of that, no. Dallas has the variety; they have the better quality food, and they have better surrounding areas like Plano and Fresco or Fre- Fresno. Fresno is that what it's called? Fresco. What are you talking about? The surrounding cities? Uh, you're talking about Frisco. Frisco, Plain, Plano is one of like my favorite food cities as a whole. Like really? just the city of Plano is fire. Interesting. Um, but Dallas for sure, if I had to pick a city. I'm going to say I could live in Dallas. I couldn't, for one, I could absolutely not live in Houston. <laughs> but if I want to get lit, I'm going to Houston. Um, you no, know, it's a fun, it's a fun place yeah. to have fun. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of clouds people's minds as far as like who don't live there yeah it's not the food guys it's the vibe yeah thanks definitely and i'm not a brunch guy anyways like i don't you don't don't like mimosas i don't want to have fun at fucking 1 (laughs) p.m what is wrong with you you don't want to have fun at 1 p.m it's like 1 30 is cool nah two o'clock i'm a night guy i am a like it Anytime I have some free time, like I'm cool with <laughs> hitting like a, a brunch spot. I mean, it's cool. I'm a night guy. Like whether like whether I'm making food or eating food, like I'm I'm definitely a night guy. Yeah, for sure. So you would say Houston for getting late. What about San Antonio? Dang, we don't really talk about San Antonio that often. I do because I think it's also a really dope food city. Really. It's underrated families. because of what's there. It's, um, yeah. Maybe not underrated. Maybe it's shadowed by the Riverwalk. That's the only thing that I know that there is to do out there. Like, I have mm-hmm. family. So when I go to San Antonio, it's usually for a purpose. Like, mm-hmm. my uncles, my uncle and his uh, wife live there. Mm-hmm. So I go see them and I go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't do anything else, like, at all. Okay. That would be my only reason to ever go to San Antonio is them. I would say, I mean, the Riverwalk is cool. Food's not there overpriced like, I, I and not good. i would never really want to eat on the river walk but um get a hotel on the north side by the aquarium 
also go to a, a Spurs game. Like the Spurs stadium is literally adjacent to the Riverwalk. You can literally walk on the Riverwalk and get to the stadium yeah. type shit. So I love San Antonio. When we um, we did the the pod there also, we also did uh, shout out to, to my guys. If, this, if these mics can talk, they have a podcast studio out there. Fantastic setup. Um, but we recorded an episode out there too and a La Quinta. Nice. My knees were so hurt that day. <laughs> like I did so much potting. I was like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> we did three hours there. We did an hour and a half at, at the hotel. And then, of course, prep in between that. That's another two or three hours. Like, woke up at 9 a.m., wasn't done doing all the podcast-related stuff to like, six or seven. That was a very exhausting day. <laughs> Just watching this whole thing, I see how long podcasting can take. I had no idea. <laughs> Like, and this is all, like, this is art. For real, like, this is art. It does take some time. It does. It's not just like, hey, all right, turn it on, let's go. It can be, but I, I usually, like I told you before, like, we're going to chop it up for a little bit. Like, yeah. if we have some time, we can't, we're going to just chop it up. It's going to be conversations here, non-conversations. I never told you there was going to be music, but there's always music. Like, it's just, we're just going to chop it up to get yeah. a better feel, because that makes for a better one of these, essentially podcasting I like this idea and like I'm a huge advocate for mental health mm -hmm. and like I feel like this is good for that yeah absolutely and I feel like this should be like implemented in some type of way I mean I can't think of it right now but like you know what I mean oh it, it, it I mean so the non-podcasters who make fun of podcasters like go to therapy instead yeah have no idea how <laughs> comfortable it is to be in your own space exactly you go to a therapist or if, even if you do the shit online it is kind of an uncomfortable start because you're talking to a stranger mm -hmm. for the most part if you have your own podcast you kind of get to dictate who comes on exactly shout out to the unread folks but um <laughs> <laughs> um but absolutely and i think um Podcasting is becoming so big of a factor in um, not just social media, but media in general. I've noticed that a lot of colleges are investing in studios mm -hmm. to where their students can go utilize those kind of facilities in or on the college campus. At UNT, I remember <laughs> they would let you rent out the studio for like, I think it was like two hours at a time. And that's what I was telling you. There was a podcast going on. Shout out to them. It was called He Say, She Say. And, like, two of my good friends were on it. And it was great. It was a great podcast. But people graduate. Mm -hmm. Stuff happens. And they just all went different directions. But it was a great podcast. Yeah. And even Texas State now, they have a, a room. And they actually provide, like, lights and stuff for this type of thing. Yeah. I, I 100%. I always tell people. I, I say, hey everybody should have a podcast yeah. and I mean everybody and I always get pushback like everybody I'm like yeah your podcast won't look like mine yeah and my podcast will never look like yours I think people get caught up in the aesthetics of it and they're like oh that looks really cool yeah I want to do that because it's cool looking instead of like I actually want to do it yeah exactly I know a lot of pods that started and ended very quickly because they realized that, hey, this is actually shit we got to do. Yeah. <laughs> like we got to actually invest in equipment and things like that. It might be cool to start off with just talking to your phone like I did, but I always wanted to get to a point where it looked like this kind of. I couldn't tell you it was going to look like this at that time, but I always knew that there was going to be some kind of vision I just wasn't privy to just yet. Yeah. So, yeah. And I commend colleges for doing that because yeah. that keeps kids out of doing stupid shit yeah i agree 100 <laughs> percent. god 120 we did 120 doesn't feel like it an hour and 20 minutes plus the time before that's that's, <laughs> that's tough was there anything else you wanted to talk about i want to make sure you get to your party on time i think that's it shout out to brandon it's his birthday shout out to brandon it's your birthday <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, that was really it. We touched on all the stuff we like talking Seamlessly. About. I know. The dating thing was a big thing. That intrigued me. We got to talk off air about that. Talk what? Huh? <laughs> I said we got to talk off air about that. Yeah. Probably um, because you are hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if there's nothing else, we just have pictures to take, which there'll be 100 pictures essentially we'll be taking. 
This Believe was great. Not. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, anytime I can identify someone I want to talk to early, it just makes the process so much easier. Yeah, this was a smooth process. Like you're, you have a knack for this. Like, ser- and I keep saying that because like not everyone can converse like this. So shout out to you. Shout out to me. <laughs> Communication is a skill. It's not something you just learn in a day. Uh, this is the Can We Talk podcast, episode number 80. We'll be back in here, or I'll be back in my own place tomorrow for episode <laughs> 81. Um, but yeah, if nothing else, uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening, and you guys have a wonderful night. <laughs>